Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge YouTube channel. If you watched stage five of the Tour de France last night, or if you didn't watch it and just looked at the stage profile, going from Gap to Pliva, you're probably wondering how Julian Alaphilippe, who was four seconds ahead of Adam Yates in the general classification competition, ended up losing his jersey and Adam Yates taking the overall lead despite Julian Alaphilippe and Adam Yates both finishing in the bunch on the same time last night. Just before I get into it, there's been a few people asking me, Lantern, where's your Tour de France content? So it might be useful just to tell you where it is. Obviously, I've got the podcast, which is just killing it. People are loving it. Thanks for all the support. Podcast, stage recap goes up about two to three hours after the stage every day. I'm also making my normal analysis videos for the Tour de France on ITV Sport every second stage. If you're in the UK or you're savvy enough to use a VPN, you can watch them on ITV Sport. And I'm also doing live stream commentaries during most of the stages, unless they're boring as hell, for about the last 90 minutes or 50 kilometers. The easiest way to get notified about all that stuff that I'm doing is to follow me on Instagram at the Lantern Rouge and I post on stories, etc. What's happening, you know, am I streaming tonight, etc. But a bit of background on the stage, it was maybe one of the most boring stages in Tour de France history or in the last 10 years at least, there's pretty much no breakaway at all and the riders rode this at active recovery pace. If you look at Sepku's Strava uh, file, you can see that he did the first three hours at 128 watts, which I don't need to tell you is really, really easy pace, even for normal people and amateurs like us. And he did the overall ride at 160 watts. So there's a little bit more work to be done in the last 10Ks with the crosswind, but an incredibly easy stage by Tour de France standards. And he wasn't the only one. Roman Bardet averaged 97 beats per minute during this stage. So an easy stage. Everyone rolls across the finish line pretty much together, all the GC guys. Quickstep put up this post with Sam Bennett, who took the green jersey, and Julien Alaphilippe, who retained the yellow jersey, both on the same team, until a bit later, the Tour de France Twitter account released that following the commissaire's decision, Julien Alaphilippe receives a sanction of 20 seconds for an unauthorized supply pickup, and Adam Yates was the new lit wearer of the yellow jersey. And very quickly, people on Twitter figured out where the relevant rule infringement was. It was with 17.1 Ks to go. You can see Julien Alaphilippe, probably the curse of wearing the yellow jersey is he was so easy to pick out taking a bid on with under 20 Ks to go. So this is why he got issued with a 20 second time penalty and I think it's a fine of like 200 Swiss francs or something. But just to remind you what the relevant rules are, my favorite document, the UCI Cycling Regulations Part Two Road Races. First of all, it might not be front of mind for us just watching on TV, but the teams know about this 20K rule and the teams know where the feeding zones are or they should know, you know, it's part of their job and the Soigneur's job to make sure that's all organized correctly. The rule just before the rule that Julien Alphilippe uh, broke says that the feeding zones must be signposted by the organizer, etc., and be of sufficient length to allow supply operations to proceed smoothly. I've not heard any complaints from Quickstep about the race organizer not doing a good enough job on this stage to allow them to refuel. And if that was the case, then you'd think it'd be a lot more teams than just Quickstep and Movistar who broke this rule and set up shop uh, with 17 Ks to go in the finish. But this is the relevant rule, 2.3.027. All feeding, both from a car and on foot outside of the feeding zone signposted by the organizer is strictly forbidden during the last 20 kilometers. So when they come to the last 20 kilometers, there's a big sign saying 20 Ks to go. They should know where it is and it says, you know, feeding after this is forbidden. And this is one of those rules that is actually pretty well known by the riders. Chris Froome famously got issued with a time penalty. It didn't matter for his GC ambitions. He was like three minutes ahead. Uh, he got a 20 second penalty when he took a gel in the last 20 Ks. You're probably wondering, you know, why Julian Alaphilippe on the side of the road doesn't look like he's endangering anybody. Why does it matter that he's taking a bid on with 17.1 Ks to go? It didn't affect the outcome of GC in any fashion. Whereas like Chris Froome was bonking pretty badly and he made the correct decision to say, oh, I'm gonna incur a time penalty here, but at least if I go and get a gel, that will stop me maybe losing even more time. The reason I mentioned how easy this stage was at the start of this video was to just show that this conferred no real advantage on Alaphilippe at all. And it's not Alaphilippe's mistake or fault either. You know, he's not the one who decides where the soigneurs stand on the side of the road. That's their job. But the reason for the rule is actually from a safety perspective. It's so that in the last 20 Ks, or you also might have seen in the last 500 meters before an intermediate sprint, or the first 50 meters after a sprint for an intermediate sprint, you can't take a bid on. That's because the rules are assuming during those points of the race, the last 20 Ks, etc., the peloton's gonna be going a lot quicker, people are gonna be fighting for position, and it's not safe for riders to be jettisoning bid-ons and collecting new ones from Swanyers standing sort of one meter into the road and people trying to move around and get those bid-ons. So the rule stems from a safety perspective rather than anything else. So even though Alaphilippe taking this bid-on with 17 Ks to go wasn't really dangerous, 
I'm reluctant to criticise the UCI for actually enforcing a rule stemming from safety for once. And the other rider they were able to identify, which I think was Carlos Verona, who took a bid on for Movistar, he also got a time penalty and a fine. And the soigneur, who you can see in this shot, was actually Julian Alaphilippe's cousin, Frank Alaphilippe. So he's his trainer as well, he's a pretty experienced guy. And honestly, it's just a massive mistake from him and Quickstep for setting up shop and making Julian Alaphilippe lose the yellow jersey for an extra day. Alaphilippe has taken it with pretty good grace, actually. He's accepted it better than I would have. He says it's a decision he has to accept. I actually didn't put this video up for a while because I wanted to see what Patrick Lefebvre was going to say on Twitter. And he has a pretty muted response. All he's done is retweet what Dries Stevenen said, which wasn't really blowing up too much either. He was just like, oh, it's a shame you did this UCI. And Lefebvre just retweeted it. So... This lends some legs. There's a bit of a conspiracy going around that, oh, well, actually, Quickstep wanted to lose the yellow jersey on this stage because they didn't want to actually be responsible for setting tempo and chasing the break in the next stage, stage six, which I'll get to in a second. I don't really buy into that for two reasons. A, you just don't have to chase on stage six if you don't want to, and you can still keep the yellow jersey and get all the publicity benefits of that. So just don't chase. And B, there's no guarantee the UCI would have actually picked up on this were it not for the television shots actually seeing Alaphilippe collecting the bid on with 17 k to go. So I'm not sure this is some galaxy brain move from Quickstep. I think it's quite the opposite. And the reason that Lefebvre and Alaphilippe and everyone on Quickstep haven't really blown up at the UCIs is because they do know they made the mistake. But honestly, I don't really have a firm view on what should or shouldn't have happened. I'm reluctant to criticize the UCI, as I said, for enforcing a safety rule. Maybe not the most necessary instance to enforce that rule, given how slow the peloton were going. But if one thing is for sure, never again can we accuse the UCI or ASO of being in cahoots and having like a, a pro-French rider bias, because they could have easily let this slide. This sort of thing does actually slide quite often, and I can't imagine anyone would really be criticizing them for it. Adam Yates showed a lot of class, actually, and said, I don't really want to take the yellow jersey like this. Um, I'd rather, much rather take the lead with my legs than on a technicality. And I've not really seen too much criticism of the UCI or ASO either. It seems to be mostly criticism of Quickstep. But I guess on Twitter, I mostly follow English-speaking media. Maybe there's French fans commenting on Adam Yates' uh, Instagram saying, you got the jersey off the back of a technicality. But yeah, that's how Julian Alaphilippe lost the yellow jersey to Adam Yates on a rule infringement in one of the most boring stages in Tour de France history. Quickstep is sad. Adam Yates is confused. And the UCI and ASO are as unpredictable as ever. But I want to hear your thoughts. Comment down below. Do you think the UCI did the right thing? Uh, taking the jersey away from Alaphilippe for this sort of victimless crime, I guess, but it was technically against the rules. Do you think this sort of thing would have happened in other sports with someone like Ronaldo or Messi or LeBron James? If they broke a technical rule, would they lose a championship or take a game away in the playoffs from the Lakers? But just quickly on that stage six tonight, I'll be doing a live stream commentary of it on my YouTube channel, so make sure you check that out. But if you like this video, make sure you like it down below. Have you been enjoying the Tour de France so far? Any surprises for you? Drop a comment down below about anything you want me to cover in the tour. I'm making a video about Tom Pidcock dominating baby Giro. That'll be up tomorrow, so check that out. I'll see you later. Ciao.